Chapter 5 Spring Madness Xanathar has let its paranoia get the better of it, and the beholder trusts no one. The Stone of Galore disappeared from its lair while it was brokering a deal that would have merged the Xanathar Guild and the Zentarum into a single criminal organization. Although the Zents didn't steal the Stone of Galore, Xanathar believes that they did. Once content to merely possess the stone, the Beholder is no longer confident in the gold safety in the Vault of Dragons. Xanathar thinks the gold would be safer under its watchful gaze, but without the Stone of Galore, it can't remember where the gold is hidden. Before running this chapter, review the Beholder section of the Monster Manual, particularly the section titled, A Beholder's Lair. Within its lair, Xanathar has access to lair actions, and characters might encounter the Beholder's regional effects as well. Beholder. One glance at a Beholder is enough to assess its foul and otherworldly nature. Aggressive, hateful, and greedy, these aberrations dismiss all other creatures as lesser beings, toying with them or destroying them as they choose. A Beholder's spheroid body levitates at all times, and its great bulging eye sits above a wide toothy maw, while the smaller eye stalks that crown its body twist and turn to keep its foes in sight. When a Beholder sleeps, it closes its central eye but leaves its smaller eyes open and alert. Xenophobic Isolationists Enemies abound, or so every Beholders believe. Beholders are convinced that other creatures resent them for their brilliance and magical power, even as they dismiss those lesser creatures as crude and disgusting. Beholders always suspect others of plotting against them, even when no other creatures are around. The disdain a boulder has for other creatures extends to other beholders. Each beholder believes its form to be the ideal, and that any deviation from that form is a flaw in the racial purity of its kind. Beholders vary greatly in their physical forms, making conflict between them inevitable. Some beholders are protected by overlapping chitinous plates, some have smooth hides, some have eye stalks that writhe like tentacles, while other stalks bear crustacean-like joints. Even slight differences of coloration in hide can turn two beholders into lifelong enemies. Eye Tyrant Some beholders manage to channel their xenophobic tendencies into a terrible despotism. Rather than live in isolation, the aptly named Eye Tyrants enslave other creatures, founding and controlling vast empires. An eye tyrant sometimes carves out a domain within or under a major city, commanding networks of agents that operate on their master's behalf. Alien Lairs Because they refuse to share territory with others, most beholders withdraw to frigid hills, abandoned ruins and deep caverns to scheme. A beholder's lair is carved out by its disintegration eye ray, emphasizing vertical passages connecting chambers stacked on top of one another. Such an environment allows a beholder to move freely, even as it prevents intruders from easily creeping about. When intruders do break in, the height of its open ceilings allow a beholder to float up and harry foes on the floor. As alien as their creator, the rooms in a beholder's lair reflect the creature's arrogance. It festoons its chambers with trophies from battles it has won, including petrified adventures standing frozen in their horrified final moments, pieces of other beholders, and magic items wrested from powerful foes. A beholder judges its own worth by its acquisitions, and it never willingly parts with its treasures. A Beholder's Lair A beholder's central lair is typically a large spacious cavern with high ceilings, where it can attack without fear of closing to melee range. A beholder encountered in its lair has a challenge rating of 14, worth 11,500 experience points. Lair Actions When fighting inside its lair, a beholder can invoke the ambient magic to take its lair actions. On initiative count 20, losing initiative ties, the beholder can take one lair action to cause one of the following effects. A 50-foot square area of ground within 120 feet of the beholder becomes slimy. That area is difficult to rain until initiative count 20 on the next round. Walls within 120 feet of the beholder sprout grasping appendages until initiative count 20 on the round after the next. 
Each creature of the beholder's choice that starts its turn within 10 feet of such a wall must succeed on a DC 15 dexterity saving throw or be grappled. Escaping requires a successful DC 15 strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check. An eye opens on a solid surface within 60 feet of the beholder. One random eye ray of the beholder shoots from that eye at a target of the beholder's choice that it can see. The eye then closes and disappears. The beholder can't repeat an effect until they have all been used, and it can't use the same effect two rounds in a row. Regional Effects A region containing a beholder's lair is warped by the creature's unnatural presence, which creates one or more of the following effects. Creatures within one mile of the beholder's lair sometimes feel as if they're being watched when they aren't. When a beholder sleeps, Minor warps in reality occur within one mile of its lair and then vanish 24 hours later. Marks on a cave wall might change subtly, an eerie trinket might appear where none existed before, harmless slime might coat a statue, and so on. These effects apply only to natural surfaces and to non-magical objects that aren't on anyone's person. If the beholder dies, these effects fade over the course of 1d10 days. Characters who don't visit Xanathar's lair in the course of this adventure might have reason to do so in Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. In that adventure, characters are most likely to approach the Beholder's lair from Skullport, as described in Area X4. As they explore Xanathar's lair, characters will see a reoccurring symbol that looks like a circle with ten equidistant spokes radiating out from its circumference. This symbol is Xanathar's personal rune, as well as the symbol used to represent the Xanathar Guild. Facing Xanathar Roll percentile dice to determine the Beholder's location when the characters arrive, and consult the Xanathar's location table. Xanathar's Location On a result of 1 to 50, Xanathar is talking to Sligar, its pet fish, in Area X-19. On a result of 51 to 75, Xanathar is delivering a rambling sermon to minions in the audience chamber of Area X-18. On a result of 76 to 90, Xanathar is watching a fight in the Pit of Blood and Fortune in Area X-6. And on a result of 91 to 100, Xanathar is contemplating its mortality in the crypt amid the remains of past Xanathars in Area X-33. If the characters attack the Beholder, it destroys one character and tries to subjugate the rest. In exchange for their lives, the survivors must agree to help the Beholder find the Stone of Galore. If they refuse, the Beholder destroys another character and repeats the offer. This process continues until the characters comply, or none are left. Those who agree to the Beholder's terms are permitted to leave with their lives. If the characters give Xanathar the Stone, it demands that they accompany it to the Vault of Dragons and help it defeat the Vault's Draconic Guardian. Not fully trusting the characters to keep their end of the bargain, Xanathar brings along its major domo, Amerigo, to keep an eye on them. If Xanathar is reduced to half its hit points, or if it believes its life to be in mortal danger, it activates its Ring of Invisibility and howls to Amerigo to tear the usurper's limb from limb. While invisible, Xanathar flees to its sanctum in Area X-19 by the safest route. Xanathar's greatest weakness is its insane love for its pet fish, Sligar. A character who uses the fish for leverage can make a DC-16 Charisma Intimidation check. On a success, the fearsome beholder becomes a blubbering mess and acquiesces to almost any request the character makes. On a failure, Xanathar demands the characters release Sligar at once or be disintegrated and makes good on the threat. Xanathar Xanathar is the name given to the Beholder Crime Lord that lives in the dungeons under Waterdeep. It isn't the first Beholder to claim this mantle, nor will it be the last. Like all Beholders, Xanathar is a paranoid tyrant that charms and bullies its minions into servitude. The Xanathar Guild is made up of some of Waterdeep's most disreputable folk, as well as monsters forced into subservice or drawn to the beholder by the promise of treasure, food, or power. Treachery within the ranks of the guild is common, 
as servants vie for the beholder's favour and affection. Such boons are fleeting, though, as the beholder is quick to distrust those who finagle their way into its good graces. Xanatha lives in a dungeon under Skullport, a subterranean settlement connected to Undermountain's third level. The place resembles a ramshackle town, built inside a giant cavern connected to an underground river. Members of the Xanatha Guild haunt Skullport's dilapidated buildings, and Flame Skulls patrol its streets. The only creature Xanatha truly cares about, aside from itself, is a fish named Slygar that it keeps in a large glass tank. Xanatha is minions that look after the fish constantly, but even their ministrations can't keep such a creature alive forever. When the fish dies, panic spreads throughout the occupants of the lair as minions try to replace the fish before Xanatha realise what has happened. Luckily for them, the beholder can't tell one fish from another. Xanatha is extremely fond of gold. A few years ago, its spies stole the Stone of Galore, which contained information that led to the discovery of a dwarven vault under Waterdeep. Xanatha was able to open the vault, but was forced out by the dragon inside. Recently, someone stole the Stone of Galore from where it was hidden inside of its lair, and the Beholder is convinced that the Black Network is behind the theft. The Beholder is caught up in the unbreakable grip of its own paranoia, it sees enemies everywhere, and lashes out at anyone it suspects of being a Zentarum spy or assassin. Adventurers who attract its attention by dealing with known or suspect Black Network operatives are quickly branded as enemies that must be destroyed. Game Statistics Xanatha is a beholder that wears magic rings on three of its eye stalks. It is attuned to all three rings, which don't alter the beholder's challenge rating. It wears a ring of invisibility on its fear ray eye stalk, a ring of mind shielding on its sleep ray eye stalk, and a ring of resistance force on its slowing ray eye stalk. Xanatha's beloved fish, Slygar, has the statistics of a quipper, except that it lacks the blood frenzy trait. Foiling Xanatha's operation. Killing the beholder is probably beyond the character's capabilities, but they can sabotage his operation in several ways affecting either the Beholder personally or the smooth functioning of the Xenatha Guild. They might even be able to marshal sufficient resources, including enough explosives, to bring down Xanatha's lair. Enrage Xanatha Xanatha's mental state is precarious. Whenever it flies into a rage, the Beholder tends to kill random minions. Abduct or kill Slygar Killing or stealing the Xanatha's pet fish and preventing the fish keeper Hot steel toes from replacing it causes Xanatha to become enraged. Destroy the Dream Nullifier. Xanatha's Dream Nullifier in Area X20 gives it peace of mind and helps it sleep. Destroying the contraption makes the beholder unhappy. Take away its food. Xanatha eats meals prepared by kobold chefs in Area X30. Killing these kobolds or otherwise preventing them from preparing meals makes Xanatha furious. Disrupt Command Even though the Beholder is the supreme leader of the Xanatha Guild, its lieutenants manage the Guild's day-to-day -day operations. The chain of command can be disrupted in any of the following ways. Assassination Killing one of Xanatha's most trusted underlings, such as Amaego or Noska Ur Grey, throws the day-to-day -day operation of the Guild into chaos for a ten-day. Blind Xanatha Nal Zindabris has concocted a poison that can blind Xanatha and throw the guild into chaos. So mistrust. If the Beholder is tricked into believing there's a conspiracy to kill it or Slygar, it disintegrates the suspected conspirators, leaving gaping holes in the chain of command. Important Underlings Xanatha relies on underlings for advice, information, and day-to-day -day oversight of the Xanatha guild. The following important underlings are described here. Amarigo, a dwarf major domo. Nal Zindabris, a drow advisor. Nilanor, a mind flayer. Noska Urgre, a dwarf enforcer. Ot Steeltoes, a dwarf fish keeper. Thorvan Twinbeard, a dwarf engineer. Amarigo. Amarigo, Xenatha's major domo, has a fascination with minotaurs. Although outwardly civil, 
The Shield Dwarf is as devious and corrupt as the worst devil, yet also unflinchingly loyal to its Beholder Master. After the Beholder, Amerigo is the most influential member of the Xanatha Guild. Nile Zindabras Xanatha's advisor is a nervous and conniving male drow named Nile Zindabras. Nile's house was wiped out long ago, but he and his elder brother, Solin, survived and joined Bregan Dearth. A year ago, Nile was given the difficult task of infiltrating the Xanatha Guild and getting as close to the Beholder as possible. Not only did he succeed, but in the course of gaining Xanatha's trust, he managed to convince the Beholder to eliminate its other advisors. The Beholder's paranoia will eventually cause Xanatha to question the Drow's loyalty though, and Nile has become increasingly worried about his future. If forced to decide between himself and Bregan Dearth, he'll choose the former and betray his drow allies to save his own skin. Xanatha is aware that something is off with Nal, and recently assigned him a Grell bodyguard. The Grell has instructions to dispose of Nal at the first sign of disloyalty. Game Statistics Nal Zindabris is a drow mage. He prepares and casts the sending spell whenever he needs to communicate with his brother. In addition to his other gear, Nile carries a vial containing three doses of eye scratch, a contact poison. A creature that comes into contact with the poison must save on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or be poisoned for one hour and blinded while poisoned in this way. A lesser restoration spell or similar magic ends the effect. Destroy the Lair Nile Zindabris has smuggled smoke powder into the lair, as described in Area X-36, and, with Thorvan Twinbeard's help, identified areas that are structurally unstable. If these areas all suffer catastrophic damage, the lair collapses over the course of one hour. Characters can learn this information by speaking to Thorvan in Area X-13. The unstable areas are as follows. Area X-2 in the threshold of the secret door. Area X6 at the top of the stone buttresses. Area X17 at the base of any three pillars. Area X20 against the back wall. Area X22 between the columns. Area X30 anywhere in the kitchen. Area X33 anywhere in the crypt. As the lair collapses, Xanatha uses its disintegration ray to carve out an escape tunnel and flees to safety with minor injuries. It uses its telekinetic ray to transport its pet fish Sligar if it's within range. Underlings can flee with the Beholder or through the tunnel to Skullport in Area X4. Those who can't accomplish either of these things are killed in the collapse. Xanatha's Lair Xanatha's Lair is an ancient dungeon complex originally built by Netherese wizards and expanded by Beholders over time. It connects to the subterranean town of Skullport by the way of a long tunnel in Area X4. A secret staircase in Area X1 gives access to waterdeep sewers. The lair has the following features with exceptions noted in the text. Unless otherwise noted, rooms are 20 feet high and hallways are 15 feet high. Rooms and corridors are brightly lit by continual flame spells cast on wall sconces. Most doors are single circular slabs of stone, 8 feet in diameter and 6 inches thick, with stone hinges on one side. Double doors are 16 foot wide, 8 foot high semicircles that split open down the middle. Doorknobs are set into stone fixtures shaped like Xanatha's symbol. Xanatha can open or close unlocked doors using its telekinetic ray or obliterate a locked one with its disintegration ray. Getting to the lair very few members of the Xanatha Guild have access to the Beholder's secret lair. If the characters want to get there, the following factions know where it is and can help them find it. Bregan Darth Jalaxel has a spy in the Xanatha Guild, the advisor Nal Zindabris, who uses sending spells to transmit intelligence to his drow brethren. Bregan Darth knows that the safest route to the Beholder's lair is a secret staircase in the sewers of the castle ward. Any character who belongs to this faction can get this information from Jalaxel or other source. If the party includes at least one Bregan Dearth member with a renown of four or more in the faction, 
Four male drow are waiting for the party at the top of the staircase. Their names are Aranus Nerzek, Beldar Talabath, Rilvar Talabath, and Draknafin Urus. Their orders are to help characters complete their mission. Whatever the cost, these drow have secret orders to kill Nalzindabris if he's still alive and retrieve Jalaxel's bag of holding, as described in Area X35. If you're tracking experience points, each drow gets an equal share of the experience while members of the adventuring party. Harpers Characters who belong to the Harpers can approach Mert, who knows the location of Xanatha's lair. He has dealt with the Beholder many times as Lord of Waterdeep. Mert leads the characters to a secret staircase in the Castle Ward sewers in Area X1. As the characters prepare to descend the stairs, Mert tells them that Xanatha doesn't relate well to humanoids, doesn't trust them as a matter of course, and is prone to imagining conspiracies where none exist. He also tells characters that Xanatha has a pet fish and is insanely protective of it. Mert won't accompany the adventurers, but he knows a secret that might be helpful. Thorvan Twinbeard, Xanatha's chief engineer, is a Harper informant. Mert shares this secret with any character who has a renown of four or higher in the Harper faction. Lord's Alliance Characters who are members of the Lord's Alliance can reach out to Jalister Silvermane. Jalister doesn't know the location of Xanatha's lair, but can get the details from Lairil Silverhand. With that information in hand, Jalister leads the party to a secret staircase in the Castle Ward sewers in Area X1. As the characters prepare to descend the stairs, Jalister warns them to avoid confronting the paranoid and unpredictable Beholder. If one or more characters have a renown of four or higher in the Lord's Alliance, Jalister offers to join the party on its mission into Xanatha's lair. If you're checking experience points, Jalister gets an equal share of the experience points while a member of the adventuring party. Emerald Enclave Characters who are a member of the Emerald Enclave can learn the location of Xanatha's lair by speaking with Jareth Falcon at Falconmere. Jareth tells them that she has been sending awakened rats into the sewers to find the Beholder's lair, and that they recently discovered a secret staircase in the Castle Ward sewers, leading down to it in Area X1. She has one of the awakened rats lead them there. This rat has an intelligence score of 10 and can speak common. Zentarum Characters who are a member of the Zentarum can approach Yagra Stonefist at the Yawning Portal as described in familiar faces. She recently learned about a black door to the Beholder's lair from a drunken blabbermouth with ties to Xanatha's guild. Yagra offers to lead them to a secret staircase in the sewers under the castle ward in Area X1. Trust me, she says, it's safer than the route through Undermountain and Skullport. Yagra will join the descent if the characters promise to pay her at least a thousand gold pieces. Otherwise, she wishes them well and heads back to the Yawning Portal. If you're tracking experience points, Yagra gets an equal share of the experience points while a member of the adventuring party. Areas of the Lair The following areas correspond to labels on map 5.1. This lair has two levels connected by staircases and secret doors. Area X1 Staircase of Eyes Characters are most likely to enter Xanatha's lair by this route, a spiral staircase accessible from the Castle Ward sewers and hidden behind a secret door. This staircase circumvents a more difficult route through Undermountain and Skullport, which is described in Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. When the characters find the staircase, describe it as following. The walls of this narrow spiraling staircase are carved with open eyes that glow with a faint magical light. Characters feel as though they're being watched as they descend the staircase. The feeling doesn't go away once they enter the Beholder's lair. The dimly lit staircase descends for a hundred feet, ending before a circular stone door that swings open into Area X2. Area X2, the Watched Hall. This magically lit hall has the following features. The walls are carved with eyes of all shapes and sizes. Many of the orbs have stone eyelids that open and close at irregular intervals. Characters who succeed on a DC-14 wisdom perception check notice a ghostly eye stalk, a scrying sensor, protruding from the ceiling directly in front of the double door to the south. A secret door is hidden in the west wall. Blinking eyes. 
The blinking eye carvings are slightly unnerving, but harmless. Scrying Sensor The ghostly eye stalk is a magical sensor that allows one of the apprentice wizards in Area X-16 to monitor this hall. The eye stalk functions as an extra eye with dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. A character can ascertain the eye stalk's function with a successful DC-10 intelligence arcana check, but can't determine who's peering through it or from where. The eye stalk can't be damaged, but is destroyed by a dispel magic spell. The sensor is suppressed within the area of an anti-magic field. Secret door. The secret door can be found with a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. To open it, one must press a nearby wall carving shaped like an eye. When this is done, the secret door swings inward, revealing a curved hallway in Area X-8 beyond. Area X-3, Beholder Zombie Guard. A Beholder Zombie guards this magically lit room. Surrounding it are four gas spores, which look like immature beholders at first glance. All five creatures float in the middle of the room. The Beholder Zombie is all that remains of a beholder that arose from the Underdark to challenge Xanathar's supremacy. After defeating its rival, Xanathar had the corpse animated and transformed into a lair guardian. The gas spores were added later. The Beholder Zombie allows creatures that brandish the symbol of Xanathar to pass unmolested, otherwise it attacks. The gas spores don't attack, but they explode if they take any damage. The Beholder Zombie is immune to their death burst trait. Area X4 Tunnel to Skullport this magically lit tunnel extends 300 feet eastward off the map. It ends at a staircase that climbs 20 feet to the Guts and Garters Inn, an establishment located in the subterranean town of Skullport, which is under Xanathar's control. This is described in Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage for more information on the Inn and Skullport. Area X5 Horrors Alcove a suit of animated armor with Xanathar's symbol embossed on its breastplate stands in this alcove, appearing at a glance to be an ornate but inanimate suit of armor on display. It remains inert until it takes damage or is summoned to Area X6 by Xanathar. The Beholder uses it to keep spectators in the arena from getting too rowdy. Area X6 Pit of Blood and Fortune Xanathar has turned this room into a gladiatorial arena. It also uses this location to dispose of underlings it no longer trusts in a manner that it considers entertaining. This area has the following features. A magically lit circular chamber has a thin layer of blood-soaked sand covering the floor and stone buttresses supporting its 40-foot high dome ceilings. 10-foot high stone bleachers hug the northwest half of the room. Staircases lead from the bleachers to the other areas of the lair, and a tunnel under the bleachers leads west to the monster cell block in Area X-7. A semicircular recess in the southeast wall has steps leading up to it. Its floor is five feet higher than the arena floor, and the alcove is decorated with bouquets of underdark fungi in stone vases and purple tapestries that bear Xanathar's symbol. Jutting from the curved roof of the alcove is a spectral eye stalk, a scrying sensor. A secret door is hidden in the southern wall. If Xanathar is elsewhere, the arena is empty, but under surveillance, as described with the scrying sensor. If Xanathar is present, it hovers in the southeast alcove and uses its ring of invisibility to remain unseen. Standing on the steps of the alcove are two dwarves, Xanathar's major domo, Amergo, who presides over the fight tournaments, and Xanathar's chief enforcer, Noska Earl Grey, who releases arena combatants from Area X-7. Ten human bandits and five bugbears, all members of the Xanathar Guild, guzzle ale and heckle combatants from the bleachers, while two goblins serve up salted rat intestines and sturge meat pies. Joining a tournament. If the characters enter during a tournament, they see a minotaur battling a scarred female halfling, Samara Strongbones, as described in Area X-7. The halfling doesn't want to die in a pointless battle and screams for help. If the characters intervene, the arena spectators turn violent and attack them. If the characters let the fight play out, 
Noska escorts the victor back to Area X-7, while Omega goads the characters into joining the tournament. If the characters aren't willing to enter the tournament, Amerigo has them beaten unconscious and locked up while Xanatha watches silently. Rules for running a tournament are described later on in the Blood and Fortune section. If a character joins the tournament and wins, or defeats its underlings, Xanathar is impressed enough to grant the party an audience, during which it tries to subjugate them, as described in Facing Xanathar. Scrying Sensor The Spectral Eye Stalk is a magical sensor which allows an apprentice wizard in Area X-16 to monitor this room. See Area X-2 for more information. Secret Door The secret door in the south wall can be found with a successful DC-15 Wisdom Perception check. It pushes open to reveal Area X-33 beyond. Area X-7 Cell Block This area contains four cells separated by bars. The rectangular iron doors have locks built into them, and Noska Ogre carries the keys. Picking a lock requires a successful DC-15 dexterity check using thieves' tools. Breaking down a cell door requires a successful DC-25 strength athletics check. The cell occupants are listed in this table. Cell Occupants Cell A A male half-ogre named Groz, a minotaur named Umpok, and a female Orog named Charwal. Cell B Kidnapped Water Davians Xiao Sheng, a neutral good female Shao human bard Claudio Benzrek, a lawful neutral male Tytherian human noble An Arthrite Grey Falcon, a chaotic neutral male Alaskan swashbuckler Cell Block C A female drow named Raylan Orinda, recently separated from her companions and subordinate Zybun Kazolt, as described in Area X-24. Cell Block D Samara Strongbones, a female Lightfoot Halfling, is a Zentarum spy in league with Manchun. She is chaotic evil and has these racial traits. She is small. Her walking speed is 25 feet. She can move through the space of any medium or larger creature. She has advantage on saving throws against being frightened. She speaks common, Halfling and Undercommon. Area X-8 Hall of Statues This 20-foot wide, magically lit hallway connects various areas controlled by the Xanatha Guild. It has the following features. Lifelike humanoid statues dot the hall. The first time the characters explore the hall, a deep gnome in clownish garb is dancing and cartwheeling up and down the hall between the statues. Gnome Clown this garishly dressed deep gnome, Flutterfoot Zipswiggle, serves Xanathar as a jester. He carries a package containing dust of disappearance. Unknown to Flutterfoot, the beholder has tired of the gnome and plans to turn him to stone when they next meet. Flutterfoot knows the features and layouts of Xanathar's lair, as well as the beholder's current whereabouts and the location of secret doors, except the ones leading to Area X-36. He gleefully offers to serve as a guide, if the characters correctly answer the following riddle. I come with a smile. In slaughter I rest. I can be contagious, but my medicine is best. What am I? The answer to Flutterfoot's riddle is laughter. If the characters give the wrong answer, the gnome sprinkles himself with dust of disappearance, turns invisible and flees. Lifelike Statues the statues are petrified remains of intruders and Xanathar guild members that were turned to stone by Xanathar. There are a dozen statues in all. Four humans, three goblins, two drow, a dwarf, a halfling, and a tiefling. Secret Door The secret door to Area X-2 is clearly visible from this side. It is opened by turning a stone knob on the adjacent wall. Area X-9 The Guild Barracks this magically lit room has the following features. The walls are covered with lurid graffiti written in common, dwarvish, goblin and undercommon. In the front of the room is a ramshackle wooden table surrounded by empty barrels and casks that serve as stools. Drain tankards are strewn across the tabletop and floor. A dozen mouldy bunk beds are arranged in two rows at the back of the room. Xanathar Guild Members 
when they're not watching a tournament in Area X6 or listening to Xanatha give a speech in the audience chamber of Area X18. Ten human bandits, members of the Xanatha Guild, sleep here. They're so drunk that for the next few hours, they awaken only if they take damage. Also, they are poisoned while they remain intoxicated. Area X-10, Noska's Quarters Xanatha's enforcer, Noska Urgray, resides in this magically lit room when he's not in the arena of Area X-6. The room contains the following features. A marble bathtub with clawed feet rests in the middle of the room, next to a large wooden cage containing a rust monster. Along the walls are piles of broken and rusted helmets, shields and weapons. Hanging from the hook at the back wall are three mannequins made of straw and canvas, with a multitude of crossbow bolts sticking in them. Noska keeps the rust monster as a pet, and feeds it items from the piles of discarded helms, shields and armaments. He uses the mannequins for target practice. The bathtub, which he has converted to a bed, is padded with straw and mangy furs. Wooden Cage A simple latch holds the cage door shut. The rust monster can't harm anyone while trapped inside. Treasure Hidden under a pile of rusty weapons is a wooden chest containing Noska's personal hoard. 37 gold pieces, 151 silver pieces, 360 copper pieces, and 4 bloodstones worth 50 gold pieces each. Area X11 Amergo's Collection Xanatha's major domo fetishizes minotaurs and has decorated this magically lit room accordingly. A stuffed glowering minotaur stands at the north end of the room. A large great axe rests on a wooden rack in front of it. In the middle of the room is a 10 foot long, 5 foot wide, 3 foot high rectangular slab of stone with a hand carved miniature model of a stone maze atop it. Stone Maze a Detect Magic spell reveals an aura of Conjuration Magic around the model maze. A creature that touches the maze becomes the target of a maze spell, with a save of DC 15. Once the effect triggers, it can't do so again until the next dawn. Stuffed Minotaur When someone other than a Mergo opens the southern door, the skeleton of the stuffed Minotaur erupts from its skin, becoming an animated Minotaur skeleton and arms itself with the Great Axe. It attacks all intruders, pursuing any who flee into Area X-8 or X-12. The Minotaur Skeleton obeys Amergo's commands. Area X-12 Amergo's Quarters The magical lights in this room have been dispelled, rendering the chamber dark. Characters who have a light source or dark vision can discern the following features. The room has been converted into a maze. Its walls made of stacked crates nailed together with boards. The walls rise to meet the 20 foot high ceiling. Humanoid bones litter the floor. Amergo gathered the bones from Under Mountain and put them here as grisly decorations. The maze fills the entire room, but for a 10 foot square area in the southwest corner where Amergo keeps a wooden chest and bed made from the skulls, bones, hide and fur of minotaurs. Getting through the maze takes time, but isn't difficult, except Amergo has rigged a tripwire halfway through. A character in the lead who is searching for traps spots the tripwire with a successful DC-12 wisdom perception check. Once spotted, it can easily be avoided or disarmed. If the trap is triggered, the walls of the maze come crashing down. Every creature in the collapsing maze is hit by the debris and must make a DC-12 dexterity saving throw taking 10 or 3d6 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Treasure Amerigo's chest contains 121 gold pieces in a sack made of stitched flesh and a carved malachite figurine of a minotaur worth 250 gold pieces, and a potion of healing. Area X-13 Thorvin's Workshop Double doors swing open into a magically lit chamber containing the following. Thorvin Twinbeard, Xanatha's engineer, is building a large contraption in the middle of the room. Floating nearby is an albino gazer. Tools cover stone tables throughout the room. There are enough tools here to assemble two sets of mason's tools, one set of smith's tools, 
and two sets of tinkerer's tools. Other furnishings include a cot and a stack of wooden casks filled with Wormwiz Ale, a Skullport brew. Albino Gazer Xanatha dreamed this gazer into existence and sent it to spy on Thorvan, whose loyalty the beholder is beginning to question. The gazer itself disloyal, a wizard character can befriend it with a successful DC-11 charisma persuasion check and turning it into their familiar with a fine familiar ritual. When the gazer becomes a familiar, its alignment changes to match that of its new master. Thorvan Twinbeard When it is finished, Thorvan's contraption will enable Xenatha to pulverize creatures that it petrifies, turning them into a fine powder that it can use to make plaster. The pulverizer consists mainly of a tall stone bin with grinding gears at the bottom and a chute where the powdered stone pours out. The pulverizer is a pet project of Thorvan's that allows him to hang around Xanatha's lair and gather information, which he sells to the Harpers. Thorva puts the coin he earns from the faction in a bank, far from the beholder's prying eyes. If one or more characters approach him and claim to be Harpers, Thorvan is upset that they would risk exposing him as a spy, pointing out the albino gazer. If the characters befriend the gazer and promise to go away, Thorvan truthfully answers as many as three questions. He's never seen a Mergo's chambers in area X11 and X12, but knows the rest of the lair well. If the characters are looking for a way to mess with Xanatha's operation, Thorvan suggests that they coerce Nal Zindabris, the Beholder's advisor in Area X-18, into giving them the large supply of smoke powder that he smuggled into the dungeon. Thorvan also tells them where to plant the smoke powder to cause the most amount of damage, as described in Destroy the Lair. Area X-14 The Secret Hallway This magically lit hall is concealed behind secret doors. It circumvents the audience chamber from Area X-18 and gently slopes downwards to the east. Finding either secret door requires a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. Area X-15 Stairs to the Maze Characters at the top of these magically lit stairs can hear loud music and raucous laughter boiling up from below. The staircase descends 20 feet to Area X-28. Area X-16 Panopticus Guard Station this room contains the following features. Five bald shield dwarves, their heads covered with purple eye tattoos, sit around the edge of a glowing circle on the floor. Their eyes are scrunched shut, but they are aware of their surroundings. Protruding from the ceiling directly above the circle is a large flaring bronze bell, similar in the shape to the mouth of a tuba. Set into the back of the recessed wall is a secret door that leads to Area X-17. Dwarves. The five tattooed dwarves operate Xanathar's Panopticus, a magical surveillance system. They fight only in self-defense. They are apprentice wizards with these changes. They are neutral. They have these racial traits. Their walking speed is 25 feet. They have advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage. They have dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. They speak common and dwarvish. Nilinor, the Mind Flayer, has physically and surgically altered the dwarves so that they sleep with one eye open and half their brains asleep at any time. Amplification Bell The bronze bell is connected to a tube that runs through the stone and into the nearby audience chamber of Area X-18. The bell amplifies sounds underneath it and transmits those sounds to the audience chamber. Scrying Circle a detect magic spell reveals an aura of divination magic around the circle, which the dwarves use to scry on various other locations within the dungeon. The entrance hall of Area X2, the arena of Area X6, the antechamber of madness in Area X23, the recreation hall of Area X28, and the downstairs hall of Area X32. One dwarf watches each location and communicates what it sees via the bronze bell. The scrying circle functions for no one else. It is suppressed within an anti-magic field and can also be dispelled with a DC of 17. 
When the circle ceases to exist, the ghostly eye stalk sensors in the above mentioned locations disappear as well. Secret Door The secret door can be spotted with a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. A pedestal hidden in the floor, when stepped on, causes the door to swing inward. Area X-17 The Promenade Pillars carved with eyes follows the curvature of the hall, and these eyes seem to track creatures as they pass by. This isn't a magical effect, but an optical illusion. Major Domo if he's not with Xanathar in Area X6, Amerigo is conducting a routine inspection of the dungeon. The characters can hear the dwarf's echoing footfalls as he approaches their location. If he sees intruders and is outnumbered, Amerigo retreats to Area X22, heads downstairs to gather reinforcements from Areas X28, and leads a search party to capture the interlopers. If he sees only one intruder, he draws his axe and attacks. Secret Door The northernmost end of this hallway displays a fresco of a leafless tree that has lidless eyes embedded in its branches. Pressing a specific eye causes a door-shaped section of the wall to swing open into Area X-16. Characters can find the secret door and the switch with a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. Area X-18 Audience Chamber Xanatha greets visitors and makes speeches to its minions in this 40-foot high dome chamber. Characters who are seen by scrying sensors anywhere in the dungeon complex can't surprise the creatures here. The magically lit room contains the following features. The circular floor is tiled in black marble and bears the gold mosaic of Xanatha's symbol. Jutting from the ceiling is a bronze bell-shaped protuberance. This fixture is the other end of the sound amplifier as described in Area X-16. Displayed against the curved walls are a dozen lifelike statues, the remains of humans, drows, dwarves, goblinoids, and kobolds who defied the beholder. Hidden in the floor is a secret trapdoor. While in this room, Xanatha uses its ring of invisibility to remain unseen and can use a bonus action to activate or deactivate a psychedelic display of magical lights, each one the size of a human eyeball. The lights fill a 10-foot cube in the middle of the room, and the beholder can throw its voice so that it seems to emanate from the same area. Any character who succeeds on a DC-13 Wisdom Insight check can tell that the display isn't the source of the voice. If the beholder is here, it's using the psychedelic light display to deliver an incoherent, self-aggrandizing speech to a group of sycophantic underlings consisting of ten human bandits and two Drugar, who have never seen Xanathar's true form. These minions clutch tankards of Wormwiz Ale, a cheap Skullport brew, and toast Xanathar whenever the beholder commends itself. Xanathar's treacherous drow mage advisor, Nal Zindabris, stands in front of the open door to Area X-19, clapping weakly at the speech. Floating next to Nal is his Grell bodyguard. If Xanathar has been warned that the characters are near, it wraps up its speech and grants them an audience as described in Facing Xanathar. If Xanathar is elsewhere, this room contains only Nal and the Grell. Nal tries to lure the adventurers into a showdown with the Beholder. If he is wounded, he flees through the trap door in the floor and retreats to Area X-35, while the Grell covers his escape. If the party includes a member of Bregan Durth, and Nal recognizes them as such, he gives them his vial of eye scratch poison, so they can blind Xanathar with it. This act of treachery, witnessed by the Grell, turns the creature against him. Secret Trap Door a hidden trap door in the floor can be found with a successful DC-15 Wisdom Perception check. It can be lifted with a successful DC-12 Strength Athletics check, revealing a wooden ladder that leads down to Area X-29. Area X-19 Xanathar's Sanctum This magically lit room has a flat 30-foot high ceiling and contains several features. Luminous violet particles drift through the air like mist, a successful DC-12 Intelligence Nature check reveals that these are underdark spores. A 20-foot diameter fishbowl dominates the room, filled with water 
It also contains a small coral reef, a miniature shipwreck, and a sunken treasure chest. A smaller fish bowl, three feet in diameter, rests on a pedestal next to the larger bowl. A dwarf wearing a skull cap adorned with eye stalks feeds a trout-sized fish that swims in circles in the smaller bowl. A 10-foot diameter silvered mirror is embedded in the western wall. Letters are engraved into its frame. The eastern tunnel starts 10 feet above the floor and gently slopes upwards to area X-21. Xanathar uses this passage as an escape route. If Xanathar is here, it's invisible, speaking affectionately to the fish while the dwarf, Ot Steeltoes, feeds it. Dwarf Fishkeeper Ot Steeltoes is Xanathar's fishkeeper. If he sees intruders and the beholder isn't present, Ot draws his dagger and stammers, You shouldn't be here. Stay back, or I'll call the boss. Ot can't telepathically communicate with Xanathar, but he thinks he can. He closes his eyes and frantically asks for Xanathar to return to its sanctum and disintegrate the intruders. Fish bowls. Xanathar's pet fish, Slygar, is the only creature that the beholder loves as much as itself. In fact, there have been many Slygars over the years. But Ot is skilled at acquiring a replacement before Xanathar realizes his beloved pet has died. Slygar's large fish bowl weighs about 6,000 pounds, and the treasure chest at the bottom is real. The small fish bowl weighs 60 pounds and is used primarily for feedings. Xanathar uses its telekinesis ray to transfer Slygar from one fish bowl to another. Mirror. Carved into the mirror's frame are the words Zolob. A detect magic spell reveals an aura of divination magic around the mirror. Speaking the word Zolob within 10 feet of the mirror causes its reflective surface to become a scrying sensor, showing old Zolob's shop and the street in front of it, as if through the eyes of the stuffed beholder that hangs in the shop's window display, as described in Old Zolub's shop. Spores. The purple spores are infused with Phaserus, a magical radiation found in the Underdark. A creature that ends its turn in the room must succeed on a DC-13 constitution saving throw or suffer the random effect of a short-term madness, determined by rolling on the short-term madness table as described in the Dungeon Master's Guide in Chapter 8. A creature doesn't need to inhale the spores to be infected by them. Once the madness ends, the creature becomes immune to the spores in the room. Madness In a typical campaign, characters aren't driven mad by the horrors they face and the carnage they inflict day after day, but sometimes the stress of being an adventurer can be too much to bear. If your campaign has a strong horror theme, you might want to use madnesses as a way to reinforce that theme, emphasizing the extraordinarily horrific nature of the threats and the adventurer's face. Going mad. Various magical effects can inflict madness on an otherwise stable mind. Certain spells, such as contact other plane and symbol, can cause insanity, and you can use the madness rules here instead of the spell's effects in the player's handbook. Diseases, poisons, and planar effects such as psychic wind or the howling winds of pandemonium can all inflict madness. Some artifacts can also break the psyche of characters who uses it or becomes attuned to them. Resisting madness inducing effects usually requires a wisdom or charisma saving throw. If your game includes the sanity score as described in chapter 9 of the Dungeon Master's Workshop, a creature makes a sanity saving throw instead. Madness effects. Madness can be short term, long term, or indefinite. Most relative mundane effects impose short term madnesses, which last just a few minutes. More horrific effects or calmative effects can result in long term or indefinite madness. A character inflicted with short term madness is subject to an effect from the short term madness table for 1d10 minutes. A character afflicted with long term madness is subjected to effect from the long term madness table for 1d10 times 10 hours. A character afflicted with indefinite madness gains a new character flaw from the madness table that lasts until cured. Short term madness table. Roll a d100. These effects last 1d10 minutes. On the result of 1 to 20, the character retreats into his or her mind and becomes paralyzed. The effect ends if the character takes any damage. 
on a result of 21 to 30, the character becomes incapacitated and spends a duration screaming, laughing or weeping. On a result of 31 to 40, the character becomes frightened and must use his or her action and movement each round to flee from the source of the fear. On a result of 41 to 50, the character begins babbling and is incapable of normal speech or spell casting. On a result of 51 to 60, the character must use his or her action each round to attack the nearest creature. On a result of 61 to 70, the character experiences vivid hallucinations and has disadvantage on ability checks. On a result of 71 to 75, the character does whatever anyone tells him or her to do that isn't obviously self-destructive. On a result of 76 to 80, the character experiences an overpowering urge to eat something strange such as dirt, slime or offal. On a result of 81 to 90, the character is stunned. On a result of 91 to 100, the character falls unconscious. Treasure the treasure chest is unlocked and contains 30 100 gold piece gemstones. If Xanathar has retrieved the Stone of Galore, the artifact is also here. Area X20 The Dream Nullifier This side chamber contains the following features. A 6 foot diameter bowl made of crystal lattice pulsates with multicolored lights as it floats 10 feet above the floor. A mangy straw pallet lies on the floor under the bowl. The fish keeper, Ot Steeltoes, uses the pallet as a bed. Dream Nullifier Xanathar hired a wizard to construct a device that would prevent her from accidentally dreaming another beholder into existence. The bowl-shaped Dream Nullifier magically wakes Xanathar when it starts to dream about other beholders. If the bowl is engulfed by an anti-magic field, or targeted by a dispel magic spell or similar effect, it crashes to the floor and shatters to a million pieces. Area X-21 Beholder Escape Route Set into the floor at the north end of a tunnel that gently slopes down to Area X-19 is a circular stone plug that opens into the ceiling of the hallway below. Xanathar can lift the plug with his telekinesis ray, creating an opening just large enough for it to float through. A character can lift the stone plug with a successful DC-19 strength athletics check. Area X-22 Arrival Port Any creature holding the correct key that steps through the magical portal in Area Q-11 of the Xenatha Guild hideout, as described in Chapter 1, appears here between the columns of rock. A curling staircase in the southwest corner descends 20 feet to Area X-32. Area X-23 Antechamber of Madness this great hall has the following features. A Kurtoa whip and six Kurtoa guard the hall. They gather in front of an iron portcullis in the southeast corner and tear bits of flesh off the bones of a recently slain dwarf. A ghostly ice talk protrudes from the ceiling in the middle of the hall. The floor is littered with bones and covered with a thin layer of sticky translucent slime. Kurtoa. These insane creatures are under the control of the Mind Flayer in Area X-24 and obeys its telepathic commands to the best of their ability. When they detect intruders, they cry out whoop, whoop, to alert their lithid master, then charge into battle. Portcullis The portcullis between this area and Area X-24 can be raised with a successful DC-22 strength athletics check or with a knock spell or similar magic. The lever to raise the portcullis is in Area X-24. Scrying Sensor The ghostly eye stalk is a magical sensor that allows one of the apprentice wizards in Area X-16 to monitor this room. See Area X-2 for more information. Sticky Slime The slime-clovered floor is difficult terrain for all creatures except for Kurotoa, other creatures that have the slippery trait, and creatures that fly. Area X-24, Extraction Chamber. A portcullis separates this room from Area X-23, and the lever to raise and lower it is set into the north wall. Characters who peer through bars of the portcullis can see the room's contents. In the middle of the room, a blood-splattered chair made of carved stone stands atop a 10-foot square 
one foot high stone slab. Iron manacles are bolted to the chair's armrests. Trapped in the chair is a stunned and weaponless male drow in a chain shirt. He is trying to free himself of his bonds but is making no progress. Drow Captive The drow, Zybon Kazalt, was captured in Skullport and brought here for interrogation. His superior, Raylan Avrinda, was also captured and confined in Area X7. Zybon wants to free her and escape into Undermountain, where House of Rinda has outposts. Nilanor has a key that unlocks the chair's shackles. A character can unlock each shackle with a successful DC-15 dexterity check using thieves' tools, and the creature shackled into the chair can slip free of these bonds with a successful DC-25 dexterity sleight of hand check. The Mind Flayer has telepathically interrogated Zybon and learned about House of Verinda's plot to conquer Skullport, as well as mounting tensions between the drow houses of Avarinda and Freth. The Mind Flayer is getting ready to implant an intellect devourer into Zybon's skull, then use him to undermine the drow plot and foment war between the drow houses. Were Zybon less useful, the Mind Flayer would have extracted his brains and turned it into an intellect devourer instead. Zybon knows nothing of the fate that awaits him. Mind Flayer. If the characters haven't already dealt with Nilanor, the Mind Flayer interrupts them as they interact with Zybon. Entering from Area X26 with an Intellect Devourer in his hands, if Zybon is free of the chair, he tries to get as far away from the Mind Flayer and his pet as he can. Nilanor doesn't pursue anyone who flees, trusting that they won't get far. Sidebar. Replacing the Mind Flayer. Nilanor the Mind Flayer has carved out its own lair within Xanatha's lair, as described in Areas X23 through to Areas X26. If Nilanor is killed earlier in the adventure, replace it with a mind player named Krizark. Krizark comes from a colony of mind players in the Undermountain that wants to implant Xanathar with an illithid tadpole, and through magical processes called Ceramorphosis, turn the beholder into a thrall. Krizark is waiting for an opportunity to implant the tadpole while Xanathar is alone and asleep. The Mind Flayer doesn't want adventurers to complicate or ruin its brilliant plan, which it keeps to itself. It offers to help other characters who agree not to harm it or the Beholder. Area X25 Food for Thought This magically lit room contains these features. The room reeks of death and carnage. Three wooden tables are arranged corner to corner, forming a triangle in the middle of the room. The floor around them is stained with blood. Atop two of the tables, held down with leather straps, are two humans, commoners, dressed like homeless men. One looks dead, and the other gibbers like a madman. The third table is bare except for an area of sticky blood at one end. Unhappy Meals The Xanatha Guild captures homeless water Davians and brings them here for Nilanor to feed on. After devouring their brains, the Mind Flayer gives their corpses to his Koratora thralls to eat. The two men, a locksmith named Skarn Zarpol and a broadcrier named Holven Ebrek, recently heard a dwarf getting its brain sucked out. Skarn is stunned and catatonic from the shock of it, and Holven is a gibbering lunatic. A greater restoration spell or similar magic restores either man's sanity. The men were hooded and brought here separately, so they know nothing of the dungeon's layout or the occupants, other than the Mind Flayer. If their sanity is restored, they are eager to return to their families in Waterdeep. Area X26 Devour a Spawning Pool This room has the following features. In the middle of the area is a 10 foot diameter, 2 foot deep circular pool containing luminous green brine. Swimming in the brine are four intellect devourers. If it has not been encountered and defeated elsewhere, Nilanor the Mind Flayer is standing in the pool with the intellect devourers. Rusty manacles are bolted to the walls. Hosts for the intellect devourers are chained in these locations. The brine is a magical substance that radiates an aura of transmutation magic under the scrutiny of a detect magic spell. Nilanor uses it to transform humanoid brains into intellect devourers. The process is far from perfect. A full 90% of the brains left in the brine rot and die. 
while the remaining 10% transform after marinating for 1d4 plus 1 days. Nilanor and the Intellect Devourers make their stand here. If the characters flee, the Mind Flayer sends the Intellect Devourers after them and stays behind. Area X27, Prison. Nilanor, the Mind Flayer, uses this prison to confine potential hosts for its brood of Intellect Devourers. Captured characters might find themselves incarcerated here until they can be made into hosts. The area contains the following features. Eight locked iron doors lead to cells, some of which have bars separating them. Three Koatoa whips stand guard here and attack any creatures other than Nilanor that enters, including other Koatoa. One of the whips carries the keys to the cell doors on a ring. A one-foot-tall figurine of an otherworldly creature rests atop a slime-covered alabaster pedestal against the east wall between two cell doors. Cells. A character outside the cell can pick its lock with a successful DC-20 dexterity check using thieves' tools. Each cell contains a reeking chamber pot and no other furnishings. Imprisoned in the westernmost cell along the north wall is Hyustus Staget, a captain of the City Watch whom the characters have met, as described in The Watch Arrives. He was kidnapped while off duty and is without his armor or weapons. If Hyustus died for whatever reason, replace him with a female human watch officer, Cressa Galavarco, a lawful good female Typherian veteran with no armor or weapons. Whoever is here has a date with an intellect devourer. God Figurine The figurine on the pedestal is crudely fashioned out of clay. It has the head of a hammerhead shark, the upper torso of a bare-chested male, dragon wings sprouting from its shoulders, and octopus tentacles where its legs should be. The Kuratoa modeled it after an imaginary god they call Gashoga. Area X-28 Guild Recreation Hall. Deafeningly loud music and chatter fills this magically lit room, which is decorated like a tavern. Ten human bandits, members of the Xanatha Guild, sit around two trellis tables, drinking Wormwiz ale, smoking pipes, clapping their hands and stomping their feet, while two goblins wearing chamber pots on their heads dance and sing atop a third table. If he's not with Xanatha in the arena in Area X6, Noska Earl Grey is here drinking with the others. A wooden rack along the east wall holds five large ale barrels with spigots punched into them. Protruding from the ceiling above the barrels is a ghostly eye stalk, a scrying sensor. Xanatha Guild members. These villains are celebrating the capture of an off duty City Watch captain, as described in Area X 27. Characters who eavesdrop on the chatter hear one guild member say, we caught ourselves a watch captain. Amargo says the boss is happier than a pink flump, whatever that is. Today, free ale. Tomorrow, gold and glory. This proclamation is followed by loud cheers. Goblins. The goblins, Faltz and Velix, are servers who have allowed themselves to get swept up in the revelry. If a fight breaks out, they hide under the table and throw themselves at the mercy of the party if the characters emerge victorious. Scrying Sensor The ghostly eye stalk is a magical sensor that allows one of the apprentice wizards in Area X-16 to monitor this room, as described in Area X-2. Area X-29 Trap Door At the top of a staircase is a landing with a ladder leading to a stone trap door that requires a successful DC-12 strength athletics check to be lifted. The trap door opens into area X-18 above. Area X-30, Xanatha's Gourmet. Kitchen. A delightful aroma wafts down the hall of this kitchen, blending the scents of rare spices, savory meats, and fresh herbs. The room contains the following features. Seven kobolds wearing white toque hats, dash between stout tables, frantically preparing meals for Xanathar and arranging the food on silver platters. Two gazers, dreamt into reality by Xanathar, oversee the kobolds and use their telekinesis rays to hoist and deliver the food platters. Two iron stoves stand against the east wall, with a slender spice rack nestled between them. When it comes to meals, 
Xanatha prefers the finest Sword Coast cuisine, including a healthy diet of mushrooms, as opposed to undercooked meat. All the meals prepared here are for the consumption of Xanathar alone. The gazers attack intruders on sight, while the kobolds flee by the easiest route. Spice Rack The rack contains 30 bottles of rare spices worth 10 gold pieces each. Area X31 The Other Kitchen Black smoke follows the stench of burnt meat and bread down the hallway. This magically lit kitchen has the following features. A haggard male halfling frantically tries to cook meat, knead dough, simmer sauce, and mix spices all at once. An iron stove stands against the south wall, and cooking utensils hang from hooks just beyond the halfling's reach. Halfling Cook When the halfling spots the characters, a relieved smile crosses his face. Finally, he says excitedly, I haven't had a break in half a ten day. Make sure you stir the sauce once every five minutes. Then he hands the characters his apron, mistaking them for actual kitchen staff. Bethus Honeymaker is a honey merchant who was kidnapped from his trades ward home a month ago. The Xanatha Guild tried to ransom him back, but seemingly his relatives either couldn't pay or decided not to. In truth, his rotten in-laws destroyed the ransom notes and told Bepus's wife and children that he ran away for another family. Amergo has put him to work as a cook, but threatens to give him over to the mind player Nilinor every so often. Bepus is a strong-heart halfling commoner with these changes. Bepus is lawful good. He is small and has 3 or 1d6 hit points. He has these racial traits. His walking speed is 25 feet. He can move through the space of a medium or larger creature. He has advantage on saving throws against being frightened. He speaks common and halfling. Area X32 Stairs and Scrying Sensor A staircase curls up to Area X22 and a ghostly eye stalk sprouts from the hallway ceiling. The eye stalk is a magical sensor that allows one of the apprentice wizards in Area X16 to monitor this corridor, as described in Area X2. Area X33, Crypt of Xanatha's Past. This room contains the following features. Suspended in floor-to-ceiling crystal cylinders are four dead beholders preserved in an embalming fluid. Magical lights illuminate the cylinders from within. Nine shallow alcoves have murals of beholders painted on their walls. Standing in each alcove is a beholder-shaped copper urn atop a green marble pedestal. The lid of each urn is moulded with ten eye stalks. At the back of the westernmost alcove in the north wall is a secret door. The western wall is carved to display a scowling beholder flanked by two hooded wizards. Beneath each wizard's cowl, one glaring eye is visible. Xanathar, if present, is gazing somberly at the tombs of the past Xanathars. Beholder Urns the copper urns contain the dust of disintegrated beholders. If the dust from an urn is poured out, it coalesces into vague shapes of a floating beholder for a few seconds, makes growling noises, then loses cohesion and falls to the floor. Crystal Crypts Each crystal cylinder has an armor class of 10, with 15 hit points, resistance to slashing and piercing damage, and vulnerability to bludgeoning damage. If a cylinder is shattered, the fluid within it washes across the floor as the dead beholder lands with a wet plop and expels 1d4 baby gas spores that grow to full size in 30 days. Any character infected by these gas spores gains the following floor until the disease is cured. I hate other beholders. If I see a beholder, I must try to destroy it. Secret Door The secret door can be found with a successful DC-15 Wisdom Perception check. It pulls open to reveal Area X6 beyond. Wall Carvings Any character who studies the carvings on the west wall and succeeds on a DC-12 Wisdom Perception check notices that each wizard's eye is a button that can be pushed. If a character pushes either button or uses an object or a spell to do so, the beholder carving on the wall discharges a green ray that a character can dodge with a successful DC-16 Dexterity saving throw. If the ray hits, the character appears to be disintegrated, but is actually teleported to area X-34A or X-34B, 
depending on which button was pushed. Once a button is pushed, it locks in place for one hour and can't be pushed again until that time elapses. A character can forcibly reset a button by making a successful DC-20 dexterity check using thieves tools. Area X-34 Wizard's Tombs These crypts were built to hold the remains of two wizards who lived in this dungeon complex long before Xanathar took it over. Only one wizard is entombed here, however. The fate of the other wizard is unknown. Both chambers are encased in solid stone and brightly lit by continual flame spells cast on wall sconces. Area X-34A In the middle of this tomb rests a gold marble sarcophagus, its lid carved in the likeness of a long-haired human wizard who wears a robe adorned with closed eyes. The sarcophagus can't be pried open or damaged, but if a spell is cast within the tomb, the eyes of the robe open all at once, an eerie yet harmless effect and the lid slowly levitates into the air, revealing the contents of a sarcophagus, a shriveled inanimate mummy wearing eyes of charming. After one minute, the eyes on the lid closes as it slowly sinks back down, resealing the sarcophagus until another spell is cast within the tomb. A character who dons the eyes of charming can see through blue eye lenses, a blue metal tile shaped like a four-pointed star on the west wall. The tile is invisible otherwise, but can be found with a tactile search and a successful DC-17 wisdom perception check. When a creature touches the tile, all creatures in the tomb are instantly teleported to the arena in Area X-6. Area X-34B This tomb is empty, except for an invisible blue metal tile on the west wall. It functions identically to the one in Area X-34A. Area X-35, Nal Zindabris' office. The continual flame spell that once lit this room has been dispelled. Characters need light sources or dark vision to see here. The room contains the following features. Two open crates rest against the north wall. A stone desk in the southwest corner is completely free of papers. The chair behind it is carved with a spider motif. Bare stone bookshelves stand against the east wall. Crates. One crate contains 50 stuffed beholder dolls. The other contains 30 onyx trophies, worth 25 gold pieces each, depicting a smiling beholder being caressed by hands. The dolls and trophies are among the prizes given to the winners of Xanathar's combat tournaments. Desk. The chair behind the desk has a secret compartment under its left armrest that can be found and opened with a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. This tiny compartment contains a small black key that unlocks both of the desk drawers. A character can pick each lock with a successful DC-17 dexterity check using thieves tools. The first drawer holds Nal's spellbook, a sturdy tome bound in black leather and wrapped in webbing. It contains all the spells that Nal has prepared, plus the sending spell. The second drawer contains a bag of holding that belongs to Jalaxel Banre. Nal borrowed this magic item and used it to smuggle kegs of smoke powder into Xanathar's lair, as described in Area X-36. Secret Doors A stone bookshelf in the southeast corner of this room rotates into the wall, revealing a secret passage that curves north. A character can find this secret door with a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check, or simply by pushing on the bookshelf. A second secret door at the end of the curved hallway can be found without an ability check. It pulls open to reveal a dark and dusty chamber, Area X-36 beyond. Area X-36 – The Secret Room This room has the following features. The room is unlit and choked with dust and cobwebs. 20 kegs of smoke powder are neatly stacked in the middle of the room. Each keg has a paper label, written on which are the words, SMOKE POWDER! DO NOT OPEN! in common and elvish. Neither Xanathar nor its loyal underlings know the room exists. When Nal found it, he asked to have the adjoining room, Area X-35, turned into his office so that he could keep this room secret. The only other individual who knows about this room is Thorvan Twinbeard, Xanathar's chief engineer, 
but he's not inclined to tell the beholder about it. Kegs. Each keg comes with a fuse and holds five pounds of smoke powder. To collapse Xanathar's lair, at least two kegs must be placed at each weak point, as described in Destroy the Lair. Special Events You can use one or both of the following special events, as the characters make their way through Xanathar's lair, or as they try to thwart Xanathar's agents in Waterdeep. Blood and Fortune the Beholder holds gladiatorial tournaments whenever it needs a little violence to brighten its day. The winner of a tournament receives trophies, and wages are made on the sly. A single tournament has 12 combatants, and consists of 3 fights with short rests in between. Failure to heed the following rules results in a combatant's disqualification. All tournament combatants must wait in Area X7 until they're called to the Area X6 to fight. During a fight event, no combatant can leave the arena or attack anyone who isn't a combatant in that event. Tournament Structure Noska Urgre takes the 12 combatants and assembles them in four teams of three. To keep the fights interesting, Noska tries to even out the teams as much as possible. A team might have all player characters, all non-player characters, or a combination of the two. The first fight pits Team 1 against Team 2. The second fight pits Team 3 against Team 4. The third and final fight pits the winning teams of the previous two fights against one another. A fight ends when all combatants on one team are incapacitated, killed or disqualified. Winning the tournament. Each member of the winning team who survives the third fight receives a stuffed Xanathar doll with a pocket in its mouth that holds a 100 gold piece gemstone and an onyx trophy carved to look like a smiling beholder being caressed by hands, worth 25 gold pieces. Tournament Wages Spectators like to place side bets on their favourite teams. The maximum wager is 10 gold pieces. A character who places a wager on the team that wins the tournament receives winnings equal to 5 times the wager. Trolltide Slaughter Trolltide is a fun springtime holiday for most Waterdeep denizens, including Xanathar but the Beholder has planned a cruel twist in the holiday this year. The Xanathar Guild recently captured some trolls in Undermountain. The trolls are fitted with eyeless helms and ball chain shackles around their ankles. They are then set loose in different wards of the city during Trolltide. When the characters happen upon such a scene, read the following. Children in troll masks run through the fog and drizzle, knocking on doors and stopping adults in the street. Those who aren't placated with candied apples, sticks of salted meat, and other treats perpetrate all manner of tricks. A grumpy old woman has a rat thrown at her face. A burly dwarf has his pipe pilfered. A small crowd of onlookers is gathered around a ten-foot wicker effigy of a troll, stamping their feet as two young men struggle to set the likeness ablaze with spluttering torches. Suddenly, a white-haired man bolts towards the crowd, his face a mask of terror. Behind him lurches a massive green-skinned giant, dragging a ball and chain across the cobbled street. A blind helm covers the troll's eyes, but its mouth is a veritable cavern of sharp teeth. It flails its arms, slashing at the fog around it, and lets out a terrible wail of frustration. The crowd panics at the sight of it, and flees into the mist and rain. Meanwhile, two members of the City Watch sneak up behind the blind troll, hoping to strike a mortal blow. The white-haired man is a water Davian noble of no real accomplishments, named Brumas Saltlu. When he sees the characters, he shouts, It's a troll! Do something! If the characters intervene, the City Watch veterans fight alongside them. These constables act on the same initiative count. On their initiative count each round, there's a non-combative 20% chance that another veteran arrives and joins the fray. The troll is blinded while wearing the eyeless helm and the ball and chain shackles clamped around its ankles reduces its walking speed to 20 feet. In this state, its challenge rating is 4, worth 1,100 experience. As the characters battle the troll, children in troll masks bravely pelt the creature with candied apples. Development If the characters contribute to the defeat of the troll, the city watch is grateful. Romas Sutlu congratulates them and spends the next 10 day recounting every detail of the battle to friends and family members. The story of the character's heroism spread, and they gain many new patrons from their tavern. For the next 6-10 day, when determining the tavern's profitability, 
add 20 to the rolls on the running the business table, as described in tavern keeping expenses. Thereafter, add 10 to such rolls to represent Waterdeep's lingering fondness for the troll slayers of Trollskull Alley.